wanted to start this called Coach's Corner, where I get people like yourselves that are experienced. Who knows if we like this, we can do it again. Um, I want to hear opinions from current coaches, ex fighters uh, that have now changed their career to pay it forward to train the next generation of fighters. Um, so I want to welcome you both to this episode one of Coach's Corner. So we've got Daily Perales of TDE Boxing. And I know it says a female's name on there, but it's not. It's actually Rich the Secret Williams yes, of Secret it's Gym. Secret. <laughs> I that's won't say right. what name it says on there, but that. that's your weekend name. You know, it, it's okay. With you. 2021. Oh, I've been out. I've been down outed. like that. You know, I'm a modern woman. It's fine. <laughs> if you want me to call you by that name? I can. Oh, wow. Well, I'm obviously a modern man. <laughs> Clearly, you are. Anyway, back to introductions. <laughs> yeah. Daily, Richard. Richard Daly. Hello, um, sir. What's up, bro? I know plenty about you. Yeah. Over to you, Daly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I used to watch him. Uh, he, let me move this. I used to watch him fight a lot because he's around the time my brother used to fight OJ Abrams. Oh, OJ's your brother? Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Okay. How's he doing? Yeah, he's good, man. He's good. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. OJ. I know OJ. Definitely. Well, that's good, that's good, that's good. So did you fight as well? Yeah, I boxed. I was um, a national champion. Um, you know what? Without bragging to my brother, about my brothers. <laughs> yeah, without bragging. I was brag, the man. better brag. one out of all of them. <laughs> to brag. There's nothing wrong with bragging. I was the better one out of all of them. And they tell you that themselves. Um, I just, I, I got an injury on my, okay. on my rib. And um, life circumstances as well. Um, yeah. So I just turned my focus to to um, coaching, and I think that's you know I think that's what was calling me, man. So I just took all my knowledge from amateur boxing, all my knowledge from pro boxing, all my knowledge from both of my brothers um, being pro fighters, all my knowledge of watching boxing, and I just put it all into my coaching, man, and. Bring okay. the next generation. Not long ago, we well, not interview. They would just shove the camera in his face, and they were saying, they were saying, Prince Nazim was saying, "I wish someone had the balls to do what I done." There's no one that really does it these days that entertains yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that kind of way. You know what I mean? The um, I, I, flamboyance. Yeah, the 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 closest person I probably think of today is probably Tyson Fury. That brings that kind of entertainment okay. when he the, the character like yeah, while he's in the ring and stuff yeah, yeah and but that's a hard thing listen that's a hard thing to pull off you know yeah man especially don't awesome. after all that go in and perform you know exactly and and this is this is the thing um why i get a bit upset with a, a lot of boxing nowadays because there's a lot of talk there's yeah. a lot of talk there's a lot of scuffling at weigh-ins and stuff like that and then they get in the ring and they don't perform. I'm like, yeah. in the ring is the time where it's meant to be fireworks. That's when you're meant to put it all on the oh, line and exactly. leave everything in there. Yeah. But you know, they, they leave it at the way. In. Talk, yeah. talk, talk. They, they, they're messing each other on Twitter and whatever not. And then they fight, they get to the fight and then they 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 run around each other. Yeah, it's, that's it's, what I'm saying, man. There's only very few that can really talk it and actually do it you know what i mean yeah because it's hard to do would you think it's like the age of modern technology where that's kind of what happens now everyone's got the mouth behind the keyboard and can send the messages and argue on twitter but then when it comes to the actual fight do the fights get made and like you said if they do what where's the action yeah i i think throwing yeah. it out there you to you too I, now. I think there's a large part of that. I, you know, I think that um, back in the days, back in the days before um, social media and all of that blew up, like if you, if you wanted to be known, you had to fight well. You had to do something. Like nowadays, less, you know, reality of it is you can, you can, well, some people, even before they turn professional, 
like they've got a few few thousand followers and they they show some videos of them running or hitting the bag and Instagram it's like fight. you could just start, yeah. you could start him off I know. Instagram, you could start Instagram him off. fighters man yeah you know what i mean so this this is um this is the reality of it mm. um but it's you know it's, it's the world we're living in um the good side of it i think is that with with the introduction of social media and all these sort of things you can if you're any good you can get lots of exposure it's easier yeah. to get um sponsors and things like that so you know anything that can um is good for the fighters is, is good for boxing yeah but i think if you, do, if you do it in the right way there's nothing wrong with it if you yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i think it's, it's like anything any um any creation, any fad, any anything that's going on, there's people who use it for the right thing, and it's going. It's always going to. Human beings are always going to misuse something. You know what I mean? Always. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Well, we've it's seen our well, recently with that kind of uh, call out. Is um, I think the most recent one to do it is O'Hara Davis has called out Florian Marku. Um, oh, yeah. That's go- yeah. That's going about at the moment. Um, I that think guy a little fight. bit of to and fro. It's got to the um, is it the manager, S Jam, Sam Jones, okay. and it's like is is reposted it, and it's like you know what are you saying? Well, so if we're talking about the benefits of social media. It's yeah. been used to discuss that possibility. That's actually a good fight, though. You mentioned it. That's a good fight. Well, I think that guy. Um... What's the guy's name? What's his name? Florian. His name? Florian. Flo- yeah, he can fight. You know what? Um, you know, he improved. I don't know what he done in training, yeah. but yeah. he changed trainer um, for for the for the last fight. And okay. They must have had a really good camp because Florian Marku is normally a come forward aggressive, wants to knock you out type of fighter. In okay. the last fight, he that's showed his boxing skills, man, in that fight, and then turned it the on when he needed to turn it on. Yeah, that's the only fight I've ever seen. I was like, this guy can fight. And he was he was um there talking. I was like, oh, I don't I am um, O'Hara. Yeah. Um I think I remember seeing O'Hara years ago when he was um I think he was training with like Tunde Jai. Um that's way, way and, back, isn't it? Way, way back. I saw him way, way back. And I saw him and I thought, you know what? This guy looks this guy looks like he's got a lot of potential. But then um I don't really I don't know him personally. Um, but he 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 for me, for, for me, he talks too much, man. Talks too much, don't fight enough. More fireworks in the ring, please. That's what I want to see. Well, I wouldn't train him. No. No. Yeah. He's not, no, no, not nothing against him. He's just not. Yeah. I don't think it's. It's not. We, we we wouldn't gel. That's my personal opinion. And and it, it's an important thing, like um, trainers and fighters. You have to gel, man. You have to have a connection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why I keep my. It's in my stable. Is 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 small, um, because um, the reason why I become a coach in the first place is but the first thing that come to my mind is to make world champions. And I thought to myself, how am I going to do that? The only way I can do that is if I have the enough time to give the, the fire individual attention to get them to where they need to get to. If I'm, if I have like 20 pro fighters that I can never achieve that so that I, I keep my stable and um, small, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Quality in it, yeah. quality over quantity. Yeah, every everything is always about the quality, and th- you know, these this is the thing where you see um, a lot of people just focus on. I want to be fast. I want to be fit. They don't care about how they're throwing their punches. They don't care about exactly. You know, it's the small things that matter. People want to pay attention to the. The bells and whistles. It's not the bells and whistles, man. It's the small thing. That's how I always say, like a lot of people, Instagram fighters again, that 
I call them. The first thing they want to do is they look at someone like Floyd and then they start doing all this crap. But not every fighter can fight. <laughs> Not every fighter can fight like that, you, you understand? So I, I'm yeah. the kind of coach where I've got my methods, but I look at the fighter's natural ability and their style. So if I think you can fight like in a Floyd style kind of way, uh, then I'll train you in that way and then blend all my methods um, around that style. But if you're someone that can't naturally fight like that, who's not slick, naturally slick or then I'm not going to train you like that. You know what I mean? Because I reckon even with your hands up, you can be a world-class fighter, just being oh, yeah. simple, just like that, if yeah, you've yeah. got the right training and the right knowledge behind you. So, Yeah, I agree 100%. You know, I, I, I think like um, the, the, thing, the thing that really elevates a fighter is understanding. If you yeah. understand what you're seeing, if you understand what's in front of you, then you're you're halfway there. A lot yeah. of um, wh- when I became a train, when I started to train people, and uh, I say when I talk about it being a train, I sort of half in, half out because yeah. um, I sort of came into it by accident. It wasn't a thing like I want to be a trainer. I want to train fighters. I was. It was absolutely the opposite because. Um, while I was training all throughout my my um, professional boxing career, like the amount of trainers that I've seen who have to hound their fighters to go running, hound their fighters. And I thought to myself, I ain't got time for none of that stuff. Yeah? I'm not chasing any fighter. If they don't want to do their work, what's the point? You know, the last thing I wanted to do was be a trainer. But I've got into it and... Um, I, I really enjoy training fighters. I just I enjoy training people, boxing training. Um, but I, I say to anybody I'm training, understanding is the thing. It's not about, you know, a lot of these people, they want to go on, I want, I want to go SNC, I want to go strength and conditioning, yeah. I want to do this. I'm like, learn to hit a bag properly, learn to shadow box, Hold learn to un- that thought. Because yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna get in, we're getting into it before we get into it. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you first. Talk to me about boxing coaching styles that you saw in the past that you may adapt yourself compared to what you're seeing today. And I know we touched on it earlier, but I just want a little bit more in depth from yourself. Well. I like to see myself as an old school coach, but with mo- added modern flavor to it. Um, because to me, most of my knowledge has come from old school boxing, you know? So the boxing, I, I don't really watch as well other coaches of today. Um, I prefer to watch um, fights because to me, my fighters are getting in the ring to fight. So that's where I pick up most of the, most of um, my knowledge or methods, you know. Um, the kind of, the greats I liked was, um, Emmanuel Stewart is my, my favorite coach. I liked the way he delivered training. I liked the way he talked in the corner, in the corner in between rounds and in, in, in the fights. He knew when to be strict. You know, he knew when to, you know, tone it down. Um, so old school way of coaching is definitely something that inspires me to be how I am today. So I just like how simple and effective it is. Today, a lot of people are trying to do too much sometimes or they're trying to do things that don't even suit that fighter just because, I don't know, they're trying to look flashy or whatever. I mean, I do that kind of pad work, but I always say, this is my modern flavor now. Um, We always see, especially in the world of fitness now, that I call it Floyd Mayweather kind of pad work, we always see that that's a lot of trainers like to do that because obviously it looks good. It looks good for clients. You know, it looks good for Instagram and people that don't know boxing or understand boxing and be like, wow, that that looks crazy, man. I want to do that. So I understand. I understand that part of part of it. 
But when you talk about uh, the teaching, teaching boxing, um, I, if you're going to do that kind of pad work, understand why you're doing it, understand the philosophy behind it, understand, um, you know, if it works in a fight, you know, because you can do a 30 punch combination, that's fine. But do you, uh, do you know why you're giving that fighter a 30 punch combination? Like, for example, I've got probably one fighter that I consistently do that kind of pad work with. Um, and I always say to him, listen, we might do this combination here. And I know in a fight, you're not going to throw all these punches. But because we're doing it over and over and over with repetition, I know if someone just shoots to your body, for example, I know automatically, you know, because you've got built up that muscle memory, memory you're just going to shoot back um, with, with a, counter, a counter shot, whatever shot it's going to be. So it does have, serve its purpose. There is a way that I like to do it. And there's ways that I don't like to like, don't like it seen done from other people. Um, I won't mention any names, but um, I don't like that kind of pad work on certain fighters. Uh, I, I think simplicity is perfection. So shadow boxing for me is one of my number one things to do. And people of today, box of, of today, all they want to do is get in, come in the gym. And the first thing they want to do, they want to hit pads. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. Because the way I teach in pads is kind of like it simulates an actual real fight the way I, I do pad work. But there's some days I'm like, you're not doing pads today. Get in the ring and shadow box for one hour. There's so much you can learn in one hour of shadow boxing, working on your moves. Maybe you've, I tell my boxers, don't just leave it to me to study boxing. If you want to be a champ, if you want to be a world champ, you, you, you study at home. You come in the gym and go, coach, guess what I saw? I saw this and I think it will work. And then we can talk it out together. I agree or not agree. And then we work it out in, in the ring and do it that way. So that's, a, that's like my kind of style is working on the small detail. Repetition. Okay. Is that good enough for you? It's a good start. I want to see what Rich is going to say. Go ahead, Rich. I'm going to say that. <laughs> yeah, yo, listen, you see this whole, um, I look at, when I look at training, old school, new school, whatever, I, I, I look at it and I think to myself, um, what I don't see now is people um, seeking understanding. They want to be fit, they want to be powerful, they want to be stronger, but it's like the understanding, that's, that's on the back burner. Um, and what I say to anybody I'm training, you know, the first thing to seek is understanding. Seek understanding, and then I, I try and move on from the understanding. You know, when you understand and you start to do your shadow boxing, like David said, shadow boxing, to me, is the number one tool to learn how to fight. The number one tool to learn how to fight is shadow boxing. Because a fighter is only as good as their imagination. You see, like, Padwick, for instance. If I'm, if I'm taking a fight with, on pads, then that's my imagination. You know, it's my imagination. I'm not fighting anymore. It's my imagination. I'm calling out shots. I'm, but when a, when, a, when a fighter shadow boxes half an hour um, before they, their training session, their mind gets into a certain, you should be in a certain um, frame of mind before you start your training. You don't just come in. Like Daddy said, a lot of these people, they want to come. Pads, 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 pads. Everybody wants pads. You see, like this, um, the, the Mayweather pads. I can remember um, when I did my my PT course. I did my PT course, and um, everybody was talking about this. You know, the, the Mayweather pads. There were some people saying, "Oh, he was doing it for it's for show." 
is for show. He, he, he does other pads as well. That's just for show. And I was thinking, people like that, they ain't got time to waste. They ain't got time to waste and show people something. That's, he's doing that for real. He does that. For, and it's for a reason. And the, the reason that I believe it is, is everything is to do with our nervous system. Everything is to do with our nerve. Every movement we make is to do with our nervous system. And if you look when he does those pads, and this is what a lot of people do not understand, when Floyd does those pads, he's even though his hands hardly moving, he's still throwing. They're still the punches are still coming from the right place. So he's getting that muscle memory, muscle memory. That's what it's. That's what them pads are about: conditioning, muscle memory, repeating again, over and over and over again. I say to people all the time. If you're practicing a punch, if you do the punch really slowly, really slowly, but with the right mechanics, really slowly, you're using the same muscles as if you do it really quickly. All right? The nervous system just recruits more muscles. I just want more of the same muscles. Therefore, if you do a small movement over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. and you can do that for 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes, then you're way, at the end of your training session, you're way um, ahead of somebody who's trying to hit hard, trying to hit fast, and sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. It's a waste of time. And that's the whole, that's my um, take on the whole pad work thing. Um, when, when I think of new school old, and old school, rather than the, the, um, the training, I think of, the, the teaching it's like I think all the, all the trainers back in the day they focus more on technique they focus more on this is how you slip a punch you turn you know grab a man's elbow turn him push him you know smother him hit him with a couple of punches smother him so he can't hit you back nowadays everything is fitness 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 and um, it just seems to me that a good few of these trainers are just PTs. <laughs> okay. I agree. I agree. I agree with everything you're saying. Agree with yeah. Everything you're saying. You know, it's it's understand understanding is the thing. You know, if um if you understand what's developing in front of you, the chance of success is much much higher. Yes. It's as simple as that. Well, we're going to move on to obviously you agree you've you've got light mindedness on that. We're going to move on yes. to um, topic two, uh, and it's how you train. It's sort of like an extension of what you said, how you train, but why you train the way you do. I'm a bit OCD when it comes to um, fighters, let's say the pads. There's some trainers that when you hear a punch, just because they hear the sound of the pad, they think that's a clean shot. And I'm someone that doesn't like to waste shots. Like if you're throwing shots, put them where you're actually going to put them. You know what I mean? Don't just put them. If you've got a pad and there's a round circle in the middle, don't hit it just above the circle. And just because you've hit the pad, it's made a noise. That means um, it's, it's a perfect shot. For me, the perfect shot is if you land it right where I want you to land it. And that's why the target is there because, um, you know, I, the, te the technical side of boxing has to be on point. And like, like Richard was saying um, earlier, is um, you, what was he saying earlier? <laughs> 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 oh, my, we're blank. Which me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 don't worry about it, because I've just pressed the record, record button. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about it. mine's going blank. we got to do this again. But yeah, carry on. Yeah. Yeah, it's just about not 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 wasting so yeah, that's what he was saying about yeah. um it's, you said something about it's not about how fast you're throwing a shot sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I tell my fighters, listen, I'd rather you go slow and get it right than you go fast and get it wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can do something slow with perfect technique. And then we can build up that speed later on once I'm happy with the way you're throwing that certain shot. So I 
as a coach, I work a lot on repetition, you know, um, the small details, because there's the small details, I reckon that wins fights, just like Richard says, like, when you're in a fight, uh, like, can you get hit if you're in this position, you know, where are your feet, are they in the right place, you know what I mean, so all these small details, I, I like to, you know, teach on a daily basis. Uh, another thing as well, when it comes to sparring, and this is a big thing for me, you're professional for a reason. So I always tell my fighters, if we've got sparring partners where we know who they are, um, and then, yeah, best believe we're going to go hard. I want them to do everything they're being taught and put it into sparring, but we're going to go hard because if we're going to someone else's gym, you know what time it is. If someone's coming from the outside, we know what time it is. But you just got to understand when to do hard sparring, when to do technical sparring. When, uh, and I always tell my fighters, when you're sparring, if you go into a blind spar, you can tell, well, I used to you know after round one, or round two, if this fighter is on my level or not. And if he's not on your level, instead of trying to show off because there's people in the ring, uh, in the gym or whatever, and you're trying to show off and, and trying to show how match you, macho you are, that's the time where you should just use that person that's not on your level, just to work on just one punch, your jab, for example, work on your defense, let them come, come after you and just work to catch shots and slip and roll shots. I don't like fighters that take advantage like that. I think as a professional, you should understand who you're sparring and when to when to go hard, when to tone it down. You know what I mean? Because I've seen, I saw an incident the other day on Instagram that's going around where someone was just beating someone up, hitting him on the back of the head until, yeah, he, until he went down on the canvas. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that, you know, yeah, guys like that, yeah, there's no place for that in boxing. So you've yeah, got under- 15 million likes, yeah. <laughs> yeah you gotta understand you know when who you're sparring so so you can work on your skills to the to the right level so yeah like richard says the mentality and the small details um studying boxing even i like to teach my fighters some might not like it but i like to teach the rough side of the sport I, I put on a pair of gloves, I've got a body belt on, I'll, I'll rough up. I always tell my fighters that someone's going to hit you low in a fight. Someone might put their forearm, forearm underneath your chin, you know what I mean? Um, someone oh, might take you to, the, mm -hmm. to, the, to those deep waters, you know? And if you don't know how to deal with those situations, then how are you going to be able to do it under the bright lights? So why wait until the fight to, to be caught in that situation? I like to give those um, those methods, those teachings, and those small details in the gym. So that's kind of it. Yeah. Rich, I'm going to jump back to you because we had a little bit of technical issue. Okay. So I'm going to jump back to you. Same question, back to yourself again. It's a bit topsy turvy, but we'll get there. Oh wow! <laughs> he started off by saying about old school boxing. Yeah. So yeah, the whole old school, new school, you know, um, but also, you know, the new school, there's some, there's been some, for instance, this whole thing about weight and stuff like that. Back in the day, old school trainers, sometimes you do some crazy stuff to lose weight, you yeah. know, um, yeah. thank goodness that's, that's eradicated now. Um, well, largely, um, but, you know, it, it goes to what I say, to um, anyone I train is that don't just take my word for it. You know, if, if, if you're trying to lose weight and I'll tell you how to lose weight properly and you should be looking at your calories and this, that and the other, but find out for yourself. You know, um, people need to be proactive. You can't just sit back and wait for your trainer to do everything. Yeah. Um, and like, what I try to over and over and over again, anybody who ever trains with me, they will always say, I'm a stickler for technique. Technique is everything. 
you know, no technique, no point. There is no point, right? Because you, you leak energy all over the place. Um, you don't understand what you're doing. So you're supposed to be able to say, um, my trainer, Don David, sometimes what we would do, we would spar. And he would say to me, Richard, I only want you to land the left hook. That's the only punch I want you to land. You can do your thing, not get hit, but I only want you to throw the left hook and land it. It doesn't matter. Any other punch doesn't count. I just want the left hook. I like that. So sometimes I'd be, we would just work on a left hook to the head, a left hook to the body, a straight right hand. And these are the same things because that I, I use with anybody I train. Anybody I train. Because it sharpens up your mind. And, and boxing is a mental game. Much more mental than it is physical. And so you need that mental work. And, and that's what I believe in. Um, and I think a lot of that has been lost with um, and taken over because there is the improvements in sports science and fitness and nutrition and everything like that. People are trying to compensate for skill with fitness. We come to the end, but I was just going to say he's right when it comes to like, I don't know, man, it's strength and conditioning. It's, it's, it's a thing for me where, because I'm very old school when it comes to training, mm. you know, push-ups, chin-ups, you know, just, you, you, you know. Um, skipping. Skipping, dumbbell skipping. punching. You know what I mean? I'm very old school. I understand the strength and conditioning needs to be a, a part of it. But I, I just some some people are a bit over over the top with boxers when it comes to strength and conditioning. You know what I mean? Like too much, too much science going on. That's my personal opinion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna we've put got one. We've got one. I'm gonna put my fifty pence worth in then. Do you? Because you know me being from the fitness side of of the world. Do you think that it's Everything's about image, how you look, what your body shape like. If you go back in the old days, in the older days, yeah. boxers don't necessarily look the way some of the boxers do now. Our boxers nowadays look like fitness models, and they do. Um, I'm... Uh, it depends who you're talking about, because back in the day, there's fighters like... Um when you look at them you're like you know you're in for a fight they're like made of steel michael, man. michael dokes you can see that yeah you can see the stockiness in them but now it's like how many it's 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 like it's more like image so I, i'm saying that around the strength and conditioning side you yeah. feel that's why it's such a big thing or are you saying it's I don't, the I don't, science I don't of fitness think it is. i don't think it is i don't think it is an image i think what it is is um making up they're trying to they're trying to make up for a lack of yeah if you if you have understanding you understand your fit your condition and you understand how to get yourself in condition a lack of for fighting yeah so i think that a lot of these people that and i'll give you an example right um a guy came to me to train 14 fights a really nice guy, 14 fights. Um, he had lost one, I think, um, in 14 professional fights. And he came to train with me. I said, okay, let's train. Um, the first session we had, he was like, oh, I'm starting strength and conditioning next week with this person. And I said, but you can't hit the bag properly. You can't hit the bag properly. You can't shadow box properly, you know? listen, strength and conditioning, you see like the top fighters in the world, strength and conditioning is like the last, the last 5%, 6% of their talent. The strength and conditioning gives them the, the strength and endurance to do, do what they need to do. The rest of that stuff is their shadow boxing, their bag work. Bag, you know, this guy who was going strength and conditioning, I asked him, I said, listen, you hit the bag 
for 10 rounds. So we started hitting the bag and I said, you're not even hitting the bag properly. So I showed him how I wanted him to hit the bag. Five rounds later, he was done. Five rounds later of hitting the bag properly because hitting the bag is weight training. It's, it's resistance training. It's resistance training with cardio and it's sport specific. It's sport specific. A lot of a lot of people are getting gassed up with this S and C S and C for what? Come and hit a bag properly. Daily. Yeah, yeah, no, he's right. Um, I think like a lot of boxers of today, they um, they're a bit soft, as in they feel like they need all these things around them to make them great, and if they don't have it. You know, it can mess up their confidence. It can mess up their social media. It can mess up a number of things, you know? So some people are just getting it just because it's what they see and they think they, they need to have it. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, I've got to have an SNC coach, you know? Um, what, yoga teacher, you know? There's a, yoga's not too bad, but, you know. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a bit partial to a little bit of yoga myself. Yeah, it's tough actually. I've done it. It's tough. Yeah. But you know, it's like if you want to feel old, if you want to feel old, you do yoga. <laughs> you just for me, you just can't get away from whatever you're doing, whatever sport you're doing, it has to be the majority of your work has to be sport specific. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be. And you know, that's shadow boxing, that's hitting the heavy bag. I'm telling you, shadow boxing, hitting the heavy bag, hit the heavy bag properly. The amount of people like come tell me about SNC. I'm like, really? Hit the bag like this. Two rounds, they're done. Yeah, it's true. Are done. Them bags are heavy, man. Them bags are heavy. You know? It's like, I mean, if, if your SNC coach, as long as you. I mean, I mean, I'm not against it. It's just like what it's the same thing. Like if, if you've got a, a trainer and they're doing certain things on the pads, what are you doing it for? What's the purpose behind it? What's the reason behind it? Break it down for me and tell me why that's going to be good for me and good for my fighters, you know, um, when it comes to SNC. If they can explain in detail why it will work for a fighter in boxing to get in the ring and fight, and then I haven't got anything against it. So, so you're saying that when people are like using the pads, like to play um, like musical instruments, <laughs> rhythm, and all that tappy tappy stuff, that's not really your thing. <laughs> I'm trying to say this no, with a straight no, face. Listen, it is my but thing. I can't, I can't. It is my thing. But the problem I have is this: I haven't got anything against someone that it hasn't even boxed before and they're a trainer because there's been some that have never boxed but they become great trainers yeah the problem is are you studying the game are you taking it seriously are you studying to be a great trainer you know what i mean there's a difference to just putting on some pads and oh i've seen floyd do this so i've seen another pt do this so i'm gonna start doing it Listen, if you ask, I always say this to PTs, I, I always think to myself, there should be a course, right, that actually teaches, gives certificates to people from real boxing people that gives them certificates to say, yep, you're a qualified pad person now. I always say that because if you see most PTs, if you, to, if you was to tell them, I always tell them, if your client asks you, because you do get some smart clients, they ask you, what, why is, what's the benefit of that? Why, why am I doing this? If you don't know how to explain it, you're going to look like an idiot. You know what I mean? Well, you know, this is the thing. This, this is where I think, like, what you're saying about getting a, a course by a train. The fact of it is this. Some professional trainers don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the thing. Tell you the truth, some you know, I I can I can remember um I can remember fighting. And <laughs> I knew fighting. you was gonna start, Sars. 
you'd be surprised. Listen, you'd be surprised. You go into, I'll be in the change room. Like, you know, when you're on, you're on the undercard of whatever, not, you're in the, the, yeah. the, old, the, the changing room with everybody changing to have their fight and stuff yeah. like that. And sometimes I'd be warming up and I would see an, a, another guy warming up and I would hear his trainer talking to him and I'd be like, what the hell are you telling him? Yeah, <laughs> like, I get that all the time in this change rooms. Listen, and this is the point I'm trying to, you know, it's like any profession any profession anywhere in the world you get the top like 10 percent that know what the hell they're doing yeah yeah and then you got 80 percent who they, they, they they're they're doing their thing and they're going they're getting through it and then you've got the last one that ain't got a clue and they're there until someone finds them out and says no nah, no nah, you're not meant to be here you're in the wrong room <laughs> <laughs> you understand true. It's, 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 it's just the way it is. And this is why, this is why, think about it. Think about how many fighters are in the world, okay? And then you think, there's only a handful in any weight division that you, because there's so many people who are just going through the motion. But it's like any profession. It's like any profession anyway, right? The, the thing is this. And I'm, I'm sure there's, there's, there's plenty of good trainers out there. But the, the thing is this, what you've got to get, you've got to get the trainer and you've got to get the product. Yes. You can be a, I don't care how good a trainer you are. If you do not have the product, you lost. It's like the CV, isn't it? It's like, this yeah. is what I've done. And this is what yeah. I can show you. I don't care how good you are as a trainer. Right, you might be you might be able to take somebody who's useless and make them not useless, <laughs> but it's like, but you're not gonna get known from that. Yeah, you see what I mean? You need the product. You need the product. They you always need say somebody. you you only need that one, Trust just me. one fire to blow up. That 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 is it. That is it. And you know, like you. I, I watch world boxing and um, there are certain trainers, they, they're, they're high profile trainers, okay? But you look and you think, I wonder if they could take somebody from nothing and make them something. Oh, I think you've got some heartstrings here. <laughs> that's a whole different level. That, listen, that's a next level. I don't want to name any names, names now. <laughs> Listen, but what I'm saying is this, right? You see, like if if you're if you're fortunate enough to get an Olympic champion, an Olympic Olympian, blah 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 blah, you know, a lot of um a lot of these amateur coaches, they do so much work with individuals. Okay, and they so turn much pro, work. you never hear them again. You never hear of them again, wow. right? But you you got to think when somebody goes to Olympics, wins the Olympic gold medal the chances of them becoming a top professional is high. It's high. Yeah. The groundwork is there already. The, the groundwork is there. Um, the technique may not be all there. The thinking may not be all there, but you know they're on their way. Yeah, the pedigree is there. The pedigree is there. And, you know, if you're, if you're a trainer that's fortunate enough to cop one of them people there, and you're any and you're any good, you're gonna blow up. 100%. Here's one I made earlier. I'm, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. But you know, this is the world we're living in. This is the world we're living in. It's all so then, like, also, if you're a trainer, just know who you are as a coach as well. Yeah. <laughs> because there's one coach I come across, right? The thing is, I hate about what I hate about the world of social media or people that just walk in a gym for like 20 seconds that everyone's got a opinion and sometimes they don't know what the hell they're even talking about because they're just seeing something for 30 seconds you're not in our camp you don't know what we're doing or what we're working on or why we're doing this and they'll be like oh ah, ah. so I remember one <laughs> coach one time and it's always these old old ones as well he was like uh 
Ooh. Ah, that Peter Patty pad work ain't gonna work. <laughs> but he he don't understand that I've got so much knowledge. There's there's a reason why I'm doing this pad work with this type of fighter as well, and yeah. and I and the philosophy that goes behind it. But the funny thing is, two months goes by. I'm walking in the gym and that same coach is trying to deploy <laughs> me with a pad work to someone he's training and he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He was so shit. <laughs> but here he is trying to look different, trying to fit in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, this, this, listen, there is a there is no way, there is absolutely no way that someone like Floyd Mayweather, Roger Mayweather. Roger Mayweather was a brilliant fighter, yeah. right? There is no way that people of that caliber do things for no reason. Yeah. There is absolutely no way. And this, this, this is the thing that you got to think about with boxing. Everything has to be for a reason. If, yeah. if there's not a reason for it, don't do it. What's the point? There's actually a YouTube video I come across not long ago downloaded it onto my phone because I've never, you never ever get to see really Roger Mayweather talking and breaking down his teachings, his methods. Oh, okay. And so it's on YouTube, yeah? It's, it's, he's breaking down his philosophy of how he does pad work. So he's got someone with him and he's, tell, he's showing everyone why he does this and what it's for. And, yeah. and why he does this kind of pad work and you know what i mean yeah. it's it's so amazing to watch because if any if you haven't seen it you need yeah, to watch yeah. it because I want to see that. you you under you understand him more as a trainer the way he's breaking things down it's like proper high level stuff you know what i mean so people don't see that that's why i like that someone must because he died you know someone's like okay i can release this now it must be because i've never seen it before okay and, uh, yeah I Want to see that but yeah. the thing you know it's everything is for a reason every single thing if you know i say to a fighter if the person is in front of you and they move their foot to the left you have to think why did they do that yeah what and why did they do that and what's your next move there's <laughs> nothing more that gives me a, a buzz and a kick is when you can outthink another man in front of you where you got nowhere to go and you can outthink them by using this you can just outthink them you know what i mean stay one step two steps ahead of them you know what i mean that's what i always try to what i used to do and what i try to give my fighters is that always try and think two steps one step two steps ahead of them and try and anticipate everything and to do that like richard says you have have to understand everything that's going on. You have to understand. It's about understanding. Understanding is key. Chan, um, I want your thoughts on the weekend um, with Akoli versus Glowacki. Um, Rich? Good punch. <laughs> Good punch. Uh, you know, this is the thing. Like, I've seen that that guy how do you pronounce his name Glowacki, i think Glowacki. Uh, yeah I, I, I see i'm wrong and i thought to myself well he's going to come to fight he's going to come to fight but um like credit to akoli he was he was made for akoli you know rangy punches hard um now he's with um shane i think he's his movements got his, his controlling of distance has got much much better when i first um when i first um saw him fight like he seemed a bit cumbersome he didn't know he, he weren't judging his range properly with his punches and he was just trying to hit hard but um since he's been with shane you can see he's adjusting distance he's finding distance much better his punch selection seems better to me and um that glowacki guy custom made for him Custom made, yeah. but like clinical performance. Lawrence looks like a professional now. Yeah. You know, 
it, that's what I got from that performance. I even put it on my story. I get, uh, congratulated Shane for adding a bit of cuteness to his game because before it was obviously it was very difficult to fight still Awkward because he's fighter. tall, he's range, he's gangly, you know. Um, he used to hit you, hold you, rough you up, you know. But um, it's kind of like, like one of my fighters, Martin, he's like naturally, um, he's very raw, very raw. And all you have to do is just give him the right tools, you know, just, just to make him a more complete fighter. And I think that's what Shane done with Lawrence Ocoli. Another thing what I liked, that he was moving right against the Southpaw. And even from the amateur days, yeah. if you know about amateur boxing, all the coach are going, you got to move left, you got to move left, you got to move left. <laughs> to me, to me, that's not boxing and that's not having, you know, um, a high level of boxing IQ. Because if you just always move in left, and then you're just going to become a predictable fighter, in my opinion. Obviously, it, to move right, you can fall on to that straight left. But boxing is about your brains so if you know understand distance i was about to say if you understand right. timing you know if you understand range where your feet are then there's nothing wrong with moving right and you saw lawrence Tacoli moving right touching all the time touching finding his range, touching moving right and then when the time was there boom straight right down the middle crack you know what i mean and yeah. that's why I always believe, even as if I was an amateur, if I owned an amateur boxing gym, it would be different from most amateur boxing gyms. I'm teaching them things from day one, you know, that what I believe in. I'm not going to go, oh, because it's amateur boxing, you have to move left. Oh, because it's amateur boxing, you have to <laughs> always keep your hands up. Because that's another thing I hate. Why is it always keep your hands up? What type of fighter are you changing, uh, training? If yeah. all fighters were like this, then boxing would be boring. It, everyone might as well be robots. Everyone has a personality and everyone has a natural style, a natural ability. So someone that is more elusive, if they put their hands up all the time, they'll probably get caught more times than if they had them down. But people might turn around and go, but it's dangerous to have your hands down. Mm -hmm. But okay, but if you're stupid, you're not going to have your hands down when you're right in front of them, you know? So it's about understanding when to have them understanding. up, when to have them down. Can they hit me from this range? You know what I mean? So um, that's, that's, that's no, why I feel anyway. I, listen, 100%. It's about understanding. I say, to, I say to the guys I train, like, do what you want. Hold your hands where you want. Just understand what you can get hit with understand what you can do and understand what you can get hit with then do what you want There's, like I, you know i always say i've done my fight and my fighting days yeah. are done this is your thing you know you got to express yourself and um like so what i try to teach people is i teach you the mechanics this is how you jab fast frequently with power this is how you throw your punches with power and with um, maximum efficiency. Once I teach you how to put the, how to throw those punches, how you put them together, that's an individual thing. We're all individuals. And, and for instance, like me, for instance, when I fight, I'll be in a particular position and I may be able to throw one of three punches. My nature, is to go for the one that's going to knock you out. I go for the one I can hit the hardest. I want to hurt you all the time. Every time I throw a punch, I want to go for the punch that hurts you the most. That's my personality. A fight, a fight with this personality. They fight with their personality. All I try to do is teach you, this is how you throw a hook. This is how you throw an uppercut. This is how you throw a cross, a jab. This is how you, this is how you throw it from these positions. Once that set, I'm like, it's all on you. You do your thing. I, you know, it's, it's everyone's personality. You know, some, sometimes a fighter will get hit and they, they'll be like, their immediate thing is to back up. Other fighters get hit, their immediate thing is to go forward. It's a, it's a personality thing. 
Styles make yeah. fights. That's what makes it. That's what makes fighting exciting. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, can you imagine someone telling Prince Nazim when he was younger, <laughs> no, keep no. your hands up? He will no. never. You will never see that. He will never be the Prince Nazim that yeah. we saw. Yeah. It, or or Roy Jones. If you told him, don't ever put your hands behind your back. Mm. You know what I mean? You would have never seen the knockout from his hands behind his back. Mm. So that's just a perfect example there. Don't take away um, things like that from a fighter. Natural fire. attributes. That's what naturally, that got. You know what I mean? 100%. So as we come up to the weekend then. Yeah. We've got the rematch coming up. Vetkin White 2. Um... I recapped on the. How's your first. friend? You what? Your friend. How's your friend? My friend. Bam squad. Oh my god! Please, don't, <laughs> don't up, don't Ooh, up. No lights. We she were, don't we like having, Deontay Wilder. We were having so much fun. You know what? I had to. I had to because I know how much you. Uh, he irritates you. Wow. You know what? He he, he does. You know what? I'm gonna t I'm gonna take it all back. What do you mean? I'm going, to, I'm going to take it all back. Wilder is Wilder. He is who he is. Um, he took the loss bad. Oh man! You he know, took it real bad. He, he took it. He took it real bad. Um, obviously, we've seen the interview with Mark Breland, which was saying that he didn't really listen. Which you could see that body language in the corner. Of a few of his fights, he just didn't seem to have that respect for his coach. Um, but it is what it is. We are where we are. In my opinion, everyone gets beat by Tyson yeah. Fury. Oh. The reason why I got John Wilder, yeah? Forget yeah. his outside ring kind of antics. I'm talking yeah. about in the ring. Yeah. There's no one in the heavyweight division that got me excited to want to watch a fight just because I knew someone's going to get not spark out. That's yeah. the one thing he brought to my attention, that he was just knocking people out cold. And you have I never got that feeling since watching, uh, I used to wait up for Lennox Lewis all the time. Lennox Lewis, one of my favourite all-time fighters. Yeah. Um, Mike Tyson. I never got that feeling. Forget his technique and stuff. I'm yeah. just talking about his punch. The, yeah. the way he... The way he delivers punches, yeah, you know what I mean. Like he wants he's, to. Oh. He's intention. He's in. You know, this is the thing. Like he's, he's intention. He wants to knock you out with every single punch. Um, punch, yeah. He's intention. The, you know, I don't think I don't think that you can really argue with the fact that like, he's. His opposition has mostly been like substandard, yeah. Mostly, but having said that, it's and this is the entertainment business, yeah. And you know, and he definitely brought that because he, he's trying to knock you out. Um, that said, that last fight with Fury, Breland saved it. Breland, he, sh he should be thanking Breland yeah. because if Breland didn't, didn't throw that towel in. He would have got not spark out. Yeah. He was going to get hurt. Tell back. the truth. I don't think that, that other trainer really knows what he's doing. Oh, no, they don't know what they do. What's Listen, that other guy? Is he called Diaz? Diaz. 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 Listen. Yeah. After that fight, right? After that fight, they interviewed him, and he was he was saying, um, "I'm really surprised that Mark threw in the yeah, towel." I remember the pulse fight press. He, Mm. Being being that being that Deontay hit so hard, I'm like yeah. he hits hard when he's got energy. When he's got energy, he was gone. He had yeah. no energy. Yeah. Anybody who anybody who understood boxing knew that he had nothing left. Yeah, his equilibrium had gone totally. He had it's nothing. so weird though. It's so weird, isn't it? Because in the first fight, he done 12, 12 rounds and still had enough energy to put Fury on the floor in a twelve round. This this fight, he looked like he was he was finished after round two. You know, well, that sort of like pl plays into the theories behind what happened. No, it doesn't. I just think when the bell rang and Fury came straight to him on the front foot, he was like, "Oh, now what do I do?" I I personally believe that Fury got into his head 
and there was a lot of nervous energy of his going into that fight. Uh, and yeah, you're... I don't think it was none of that. I think what happened was he got beat the hell up. <laughs> think, think, think about think about this. Think about this, right? Think about it. When when he was in a hurry to fight Fury the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Fury had had that long layoff yeah. and he was just coming back. He thought he was right? washed. Yeah. Right. He thought Fury, he thought Fury was ready to be taken. Yeah. He fought him and he got the draw and he was lucky to get the draw. Yeah. All right. He was lucky to get the draw. Yeah. Now, for me, in the rematch, and somebody came here and they said, Oh, what do you think about this fight? And I thought to myself, and I said, the fight is going to be a beatdown because he fought Fury at his absolute worst. Worse, and yeah. he got a draw. This time, Fury's training hard, yeah. he's fit, he's ready. And Fury said he's going to go to him. And exactly what he did. Well, how, how, yeah, how much that was good, 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 what, good getting that sugar, sugar hill for prompt. 15 stone something. It was a beatdown. But if when I'm saying that before he went in, to me, he's he was just off before he went in the ring. I just thought he yeah, just he looked weird. He looked he was too heavy. Scared. Yeah, the yeah the suit. Uh, oh, suit. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not having the suit. But you know what? You know what? I just think yeah, it, it just it, it got he, to he, him. It's he like just, a big fight is it, yeah. it, it got to him a little bit. I think it overwhelmed know? him. Yeah. Fury and I reckon Fury can will do that against. Yeah, Joshua. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, who, who you else? You know why? I had uh, the Joshua Ruiz first fight oh, in my right. mind because the reason why I reckon he got beat up in that fight, just my personal opinion, all these fights are in the UK, right? Yeah. Then yeah. all of a sudden, now you're in Madison Square Garden defending all your belt. You know, some fighters find that tough to, to make that transition. You, you mean, mean a bit of stage fright? Yeah, I reckon he did have a bit of stage fright. You're going into the the like the mecca of boxing is either uh, uh, Madison Square Garden or or the MGM Grand. You know, some people they they you know that energy is different to like fighting in your hometown. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you know what I think um, that could well be the thing. But this is this is what I think as well. Like you know, like you train. You fight, you have a few fights a year or whatever not. And not every single fight, you must have had it yourself right there. It's like sometimes you train, you're in training for a fight, you feel fantastic. Yeah. And the, the fight, I've woken up and I'm like, I don't feel good today. Yeah. You don't get out of the fight. <laughs> you still, you're a fight, you still have the fight. You know what I mean? There's so many fighters. No matter what you've been doing in, in training camp or whatever, not you, you train up to the fight. On that day, sometimes you wake up and you don't feel good. And it so, can be the know, smallest thing that puts you off the game. You know I mean? remember I woke up, I, I woke, I, I, I always suffered with migraine. And I woke up one fight night, fight day, and I had a migraine. And I had it all day. I had it in the changing room. I was in the dark with a towel over my head with my gloves on waiting to go out you know what i mean it's just like it's just one of those things um the, what i liked about the fact is that joshua he took his beat and he made no he made no excuses he came back done his thing yeah and and i think that's what any fighter should do right because things are not going to be perfect all the time all the time yeah did you hear what tyson said what did he say mike tyson, mike tyson. What do you yeah, say? he thinks uh, Fury's going to have him, doesn't he? Yeah, but based on he goes Wilder punches with devastating power, but he punches fast with it. Yeah. And Fury was able to deal with that speed of those punches coming his way. And he, what Mike Tyson was saying is Joshua hits hard just the same, but, but yeah, he doesn't he doesn't punch with devastating speed so he thinks fury will be able to see joshua's punches all day long and just take him to school interesting mm. 
I think Fury. I do favorite. believe that if Joshua lands, he, he, he obviously it's heavyweight Lights boxing. Out. He can knock Fury out. But I just think now he added Sugar Hill, who was uh, who is the nephew of Emmanuel Stewart. So obviously he's come up through the cronk, you know, learning yeah. from his uncle. I just think adding him as his trainer, we all know Fury is perfect on the back foot. You know, make you look yeah. stupid when he's dancing on the back foot. But the size of him, you know, six foot nine, all that weight. How about doing that on the front foot, which he showed yeah. against Wilder? Exactly. He can, so if he's if he's got the back foot down, and now he's added that, when he's got those two against Joshua, I think that's going to be the the difference of um, yeah. in the fight. Richard, yeah. I no, I agree because like when. Um, when when Fury was doing this running around thing, and he's brilliant, eh? You know, for for a man his size, he can box. He's a brilliant boxer. Um, I I said if he does that, I think Joshua's gonna track him down and and, and beat him because I I think Joshua's gonna catch him. But after how he um fought Wilder the second time, if he fights like that. And he mixes it up with a little bit yeah. of movement, a little bit of because I always say, I always say with any fight, okay, you can have a plan, you can have a plan, but what determines whether or not your plan works is, for instance, if your if your plan is to stay on the outside all the time and win from the outside, the success of your plan is dependent on when that person eventually gets inside, because they will get inside, yeah. how you cope with the bad times. Exactly. It's all about how you cope with the bad times. You can have a plan, but what happens when your plan's not working? How do you negate that part? And if you negate that part well, then your, your plan might, might, might work. I think it helps that probably Fury doesn't have that kind of muscle as like Joshua has as well. Yeah. So it enables him to do what he wants to do with without taking energy out of his arms, you know, for the fight. So imagine Fury putting all that weight, grabbing Joshua, you know what I mean? On the inside, roughing him up, six foot nine with all that, all that weight difference, you know what I mean? So it's, it's going to be an interesting fight. Very interesting. Just like, like this weekend. Because that's where we that's where we started. We started this weekend and we ended up talking about Joshua Fury. That was supposed to be for later on. So yeah, yeah. Vetkin White, Daily, who wins and why? You know why Dillian uh, he better win and not make me look like an idiot. The reason why I think he's gonna win the rematch is because he has hired what's his name? Something Knight. Knight. Harold Knight. Harold Knight. Harold Knight. Harold yeah, Knight. that's it. And he Knight. was with Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis. Well, all, his, all his career, you know what I mean? Adding someone like that, it might, to other people, might not be much, but that could be the difference of winning the rematch because he was winning the fight in the first place, in the, in the first fight. He was. He just lost concentration for... A, a second. Also, he was trying. Uh, I think how night goes. He he wasn't cooked yet, or something like that. Okay. Saw an interview. He goes. He just weren't. Povetkin wasn't ready yet, and he was trying to go in for the kill too quick. And he, he allowed Povetkin to close the distance on him. You shouldn't let Povetkin close the distance on you. So um, he needs to work behind that jab. You know break him down a bit because he's got the power to hurt Povetkin. So you don't have to do it in round one, two. You've got, you got 12 rounds, break him down. And uh, then the rest will take care of itself. He needs to obviously have studied that knockout because if you see in slow motion, Povetkin, his body positioning, as he goes down, it looks like he's going to the body. Yeah. And you saw Dillian White fall for it and move his arm. And that created space for the uppercut to come bang right up there. So those are the small details he needs to work on when Povetkin closes, because he is going to get to him at some point. So he needs to sort that stuff up, make sure he's covered up properly and don't fall for things like that. The setups. Yeah. Rich, over to you. 
the setup. Um, Dylan's gonna win the fight. Dylan's gonna win the fight. Um, and you know what? He was gonna win the first time. And um, I, and you know, this is what I love about boxing because I'm hearing so. I just had the um, daily thing about the knockout and all of that sort of stuff. And for me, for me. It was a, you know, I don't think he, I don't think he relaxed. I don't think, I don't think it was anything like that. He just drew for the wrong, he just drew for the wrong thing at the wrong time. Like, so, you see what you're saying um, about, he threw the right hand. He threw the yeah. right hand, so Vickings has gone out to the left. You know, left hook, left uppercut's coming. Yeah. Left hook, left uppercut. Understanding. Understand. If you're, if you, if you, are close up with anybody and they slip outside of your right hand, they slip outside of your jab and they're close to you, you know they're not going to throw a straight punch, right? Yeah. It's a hook or an uppercut. What Dylan did, he threw the right hand and then he went to, he, and Povetkin went to his right, he went out to Dylan's white right hand side and Dylan went to throw the left hook. And, and left his head in the middle. So we opened up. That's a, it's a sin. If somebody's that close to you, if somebody's that close to you, and they slip out to the left or the right, if you're going to throw a punch, as you throw that punch, you have to lean. You have to lean. Yeah. Any side you go, you have to lean. It takes it away 100%. percent game, isn't it? You know, he's, he's very good at thing because Pavetkin's going to get there. There's no way that there's going to be a 12-round fight and Povetkin ain't going to get... He's going to get there. And it's about how Dylan deals with it when he does get there. Also, get there in the middle. Povetkin's going to have uh, come in with a lot of confidence, confidence. because of what he done in the first fight. So Dylan has to be prepared that he's going to come up against a more confident Povetkin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas 100%. probably before Povetkin just... He's getting old now, so he probably sees it. Oh, yeah, good little payday. You know what I mean? Yeah, one last hurrah. Yeah, one. And now look, he's given himself. He's opened the door for himself. If he beats Dillian White, he's going to get another big check. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. It, for, in another fight. 100%. Could fight Deontay It's going to be a good fight. It's going to be exciting. Exciting. But yeah, Dylan's going to do it. Dylan, yeah, I I think he'll do it. He'll make those you know adjustments. You know, you know have you seen the the shot from above of where it's going to be on the rock? No, no. I did watch the um. It ain't a, it ain't a show called the, the fight on the rock or something like that. Rumble, rumbling, yeah, the rock. Rock, the, the yeah. rumble on the rock or something. Yes, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. like on a mountain. Yeah, yeah, it's really it is, cool. It is it's beautiful. Um, Another thing that I would but say... But I, I just think, yeah, Harold Knight, you know. Yeah, he, I think sometimes, you know, Dillian White, you know one thing, one thing with him... Yeah. ...is when he feel he can get drawn into a fight easily, Dillian White. Because he's a scrapper. Yeah, he and then he ends up being wild with his shots. Sometimes his balance is a bit all over the place oh, because he's takes. putting so much into those wild shots. He's falling off balance. You know, he, he done it. He does it. Does it a lot. He done it against Joshua. He's done it against uh, Chisora and all that. And oh, I, okay. these are the these are the kind of things I hope Harold Knight, I know who will see, and you know, just sort those little things out. You know what I mean? See, to be fair, I think I think um, like before that, I think Xavier, um, good. You see, like Xavier trainer, um, good trainer. Yeah. Like and like you see what we were talking about <laughs> earlier. He's got like his IQ boxing um, gym. He, he takes people up from nothing, amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, um, Dylan will be getting like good. He'll get be getting good schooling from um, from that. And what I've heard a lot of people say is that the mistake Dylan made was that oh, you know, he didn't do his usual thing and try and finish him off, and he was trying to be too cautious. I don't think it was anything like that. I think it was just like. He shot, he, sh he shot, he picked a punch at the wrong time, got done. That was it. Yeah, that was it. He was winning the fight, so. Yeah, he's going to do it. 
the, the, odds, the odds are okay, I think. The betting okay, odds. put it this way. Put it this way. When Joshua got battered by Andy Ruiz, mm -hmm. he would have been stupid to go in with a rematch and try and scrap with him like he did in the first fight. Yeah, he definitely boxed So what did he do? He just boxed stuck to him. boxing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not saying Dillian White has to dance around the ring like Joshua did for 12 rounds against Andy Ruiz in the rematch. But, you know... You think he's going that's, the distance then? That's one thing I like about Joshua. He always... It's like he goes back in the gym and he proves on the small details. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's not my favourite no, heavyweight, I have to admit. But yeah, I, appre I, appreciate, I appreciate what he does. You know what I mean? Who's your favourite heavyweight? It's Fury, isn't it? Yeah, Fury now. Yeah. Fury now. It was but Wilder. He's, he's, not my, he's not my type of fighter. Yeah. You know? He's not my type of fighter, really. But, um, but yeah. If you was to say who's the best heavyweight out there, oh, yeah, it's going to yeah, be yeah. Fury for me. For me, Joshua came world champion at a time where, you know, it, it was all there for him because of Fury's problems. You know what I mean? He had to he give up all his belts because of his, you know, all the stuff he was yeah. going through. But to me, Fury's the best. If you can go to bloody Germany and beat someone that hasn't lost in how many years? go to their backyard and take all their belts. Then he, after all the depression and all the drugs and all that or whatever, and then he goes straight into someone else's backyard again against the hardest hitting heavyweight and do what he done. And then to me, and he's got the best belt as well, the WBC. So to me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's the best. But you know, I, I, I read something, Emmanuel Stewart said years ago about when, um, when they were younger and Fury... He met Fury for the first time and all that oh, yeah. and up there. And he said that he, he was so mentally tough and his ability and, you know, for Emmanuel Stewart to say that, you know, quality. Yeah, well, he went out of his way to go there on his own, didn't he? Yeah. In terms that, belief, that belief, you know, goes such a long way. And it's yeah. even, even if you don't really believe it yourself, it, like I heard Mike Tyson goes, uh, this old white man kept telling me he could be champion of the world, champion. Well, I thought he was crazy. I thought he was crazy. But he kept telling me, kept telling me, kept telling me, kept telling me. Then all of a sudden, I started believing it, thinking, yeah, I can, I can. I can. So yeah, it's all up here, and that's why yeah. I think Tyson Fury. If I was Josh Eddie Hearn, I'll say I, I, I wouldn't do so much press <laughs> promote tours for this. Fury Try and get it as close it. to the fight as possible because if they start those press tours like three the months out, one. yeah, yeah, Tyson Fury 100% is going to get in Joshua's head. 100%. You think so? Yeah, and that's you know what? This is the thing, I don't think he can, you know. Okay, so Joshua when, seems when, big about baby, his business, man. when big baby cheating Miller, yeah, yeah, he rattled Joshua even though they didn't fight. He, I reckon he got to Joshua because you don't yeah. really see Joshua losing his call. Cool, you know what I mean? Even Pulev um, got did in Joshua's head. A did he bit. lose his call cool with Miller? Well, he started. They started scuffling and pushing each other. No, that was Miller. AJ was like, "Come on, then." Yeah. Remember, but... remember when AJ was fighting Povetkin and Miller started mouthing off in the background, and AJ just turned to Eddie and said, "Hold my belts." AJ's ready exactly. for it. He's he's ready for it. Yeah. yeah. When that when them two had that press conference, it was Miller that was wound up. Wasn't AJ blowing kisses to his mum or something? <laughs> Listen, I, AJ, that, and this is what I like about him. He's about his business. He's like, nothing's gonna mess with his business, man. I think he's there. He's there to do his thing. He's focused. I don't think anything's gonna pull him up. I don't think um, any Tyson Fury antics um, are going to get to him because I, I believe... He'll do some madness. <laughs> he will do, do some madness. Superman or something, start cartwheeling across the... He will do some... You, you don't understand. Yeah, Tyson Fury has been talking about Joshua for years and taking the piss out of him as well. 
So Josh, you'll be Fury, used to it then Fury's and like, built up a resilience to it. There's not many people that can do what Fury does or have the balls to do what he does. You know what I mean? He's like, he's like a, what is he? Like a, a Apollo, Apollo Creed. <laughs> Apollo Creed. See, this is the thing. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's different. I mean, you know, would that, that, that stuff, wouldn't, I don't think it would get to me because I would just be thinking, well, when we get in the ring, I'm going to beat you up. Yeah, I you think know? Joshua's got a cool head on his shoulders. Yeah, yeah. He's got a cool head on his shoulders. It just depends. I'm still... I, I, he's, I, he's not one for the talking. He doesn't, he doesn't do all the talking. AJ's not the talker, is he? Fury's the one that likes... He'll do talk. something. Tyson Fury's going to do something. Even if it's the ring walk. <laughs> I've been like, just, who's going who's gonna to walk in second, do you think? Ooh. I'll tell you this. If it's Tyson Fury coming in second, they don't want him to come in second. Because that could be the part there... The breaker. That could... <laughs> Touch a little nerve in the brain of Andy. If he Wait. comes out like he did against Wilder, something dramatic, on the dramatic like that, and you're there waiting in the ring, seeing all that stuff go on, you gotta be so mentally strong. And I hope Josh was mentally strong enough for to deal with that kind of stuff. I think he is, but Tyson Fury is very good at all that crap, man. But I, I, I don't. I just don't know. I. You know what? I'm I'm like. Do you think Chuck? You think Fury's gonna win though, right? I'm, I think he's a favorite. Yeah. I used to I used to think that Joshua would punch holes in it, right? But um, two things really. Um, Joshua's lost to um, Ruiz, right? Not the fact of him losing, but more the fact of um, there was a round. I don't know what round it was. But Robert McCracken was speaking to him. Robert McCracken was speaking to him. Why do said, you like this? He was speaking to Joshua and he was like, you need to, you need to up, up what you're doing or up your work rate or something. And Joshua said to him, yeah, but what punches should I throw? Yeah. And yeah. why do I feel like this? No, not even the why do I feel like no, I understand. I understand he's not feeling well. I understand he's not feeling well and um, all of that. But for me, I'm like, you're in the corner and you ask your trainer, but what punches should I throw? You see, like, if, 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 if I'm a trainer and I say to my fighter, all right, I want you to, I want you to stick close to his body. I want you to stay close to him. You can't then ask me, yeah, but what punches should I throw? You need to throw the punches that are going to be more effective. That's the answer. It's like, why are you asking what punches should you throw? And to be that, fair, Rob McCracken was saying some, he was saying the right things as well. He was saying, listen, stop going down to his level because he kept going, dropping low. You to use your range. Yeah, and your use your straight shots. Mm. You know, you get behind your jab. I, I, I think he must have been concussed, man. Because yeah, uh, yeah. How can you go back to a corner and tell the trainer, oh, what punches do I throw? Yeah. He, well, this is what I'm saying. I'm like, Wow. So, and, and how Fury dealt with Wilder the second time. Because I didn't expect him to fight like that. I always thought he was going to be moving around and, and like tippy tap tap, you know, trying to get away. And I thought if he fights Joshua like that, Joshua's going to beat him. If he fights but, Joshua like that, I can see the same thing happening again. Him going back to the corner to Ron McCracken going, what punches do I throw? <laughs> if, he fights, if he fights like how he fought Wilder, the second time, I think Joshua, you know what? Joshua's going to have I'm going to do time. a bet on Joshua to KO Fury, though, just because. <laughs> just after everything you've just said. No, I know, I know. Just put that what? on on the side. You know what I mean? It could be a good earner if I put it in yeah. the right round. It could happen. It could happen. Because it can happen. It can happen. Joshua, can happen. I I don't know. Who, He's going in as the underdog. You know, as it gets closer, as it gets favorite. closer, it always happens. It, as it gets closer, mm. it could be a thing where, oh, you know, Joshua could do this. As it stands, I don't Switching think it's going to be Fury. You know, he's got I'm so much to, If you've got a man that's come back Joshua. from depression and drugs 
and is laying there on the floor, knocked out by Deontay Wilder, then raises up like Undertaker and still gets back up and beats him up after getting dropped like that. He, he's so mentally strong, uh, Tyson Fury. So mentally yeah. strong. I yeah. think that might be the difference. But I don't know. I think Joshua's mentally strong as well, you know. I like him so much. I'm telling you, I like him. I like... He's, he, I know he's... he's um, he, he seems very... What's the word? Cautious. Manufactured. He's like, he says the right things all the time. And, he's you know cautious. What I mean? Because if he says he never, anything, he drops in the smellies for it. So he's yeah. mindful of what he says. Yeah, he's very, you know what I mean? He's Cautious. very guarded. He's yeah. very guarded. But I like him. I like how he um I like how he carries himself. I like how he, he reps boxing. I like him. You know what I mean? And um like I said, um prior to Fury's last fight with Wilder, mm -hmm. I was like Joshua's gonna punch holes in. It's only the last um, fight Fury's had that's made me think, oh, okay. Yeah. If he fights Joshua like that, this, this is going to be a different different thing. We'll so, see, because Joshua is adaptable. He's adaptable to the fight that he takes on. So we'll see. I'm not going to write him yeah, off. Yeah, against the Andy Ruiz, maybe. And you got to think as well, you know, like it just... I, Joshua, Joshua. When when did he when did he start boxing? Like 18, 19, something yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, Olympic gold medalist, yeah. um, turned professional, yeah. um, heavyweight champion lot, in the seventies fight. He's still le he's still learning. Yeah. He's still learning. Uh, he never had a long amateur career. Whoever wins, yeah, I would just call it a day. Just walk off into the sunset. Who else is there to fight in that division? Once you once that fight has been done, okay, they have the rematch clause, they do the rematch or whatever. But then after that fight, who are you gonna fight after that? Dylan White. Yeah, but Joshua you know White don't really interest me. Listen, you know what? This is the thing. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Like, when I think that's a good shoulder. There, that's a good UK shoulder. When they when they you know they're still feeling good and still feeling fresh. And they're going to be earning a few million. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> I, I'm not walking away. That's true. I mean, if someone not offered me five away. million to fight a YouTuber, I'll get in there straight I'm like, away. Come on now. Yes, I'll die. I'm sure yeah, you I'm can not. find me. Yeah, you know that. Isn't it? It's like, I'm sure you can find me someone with one arm to fight. <laughs> <laughs> and one leg. <laughs> you understand? So, we had a couple of rules. We didn't stick to them, but I suppose rules are there to be broken. But thank you. What rule was that? Five minute rule. But you know, you did. Hold you're on, supposed you to pull. You're supposed thing. to. You're supposed to pull out after five minutes. But no, you just wanted to carry on. We're we're fighters. That's why. So, so I'm gonna get a bell next time, and I'm gonna ring it, and we have to stop because we broke the rules. But it was a good convo. Daily parades. Rich the Secret, Williams, thanks for yes, being yes. on Coach's Corner. <laughs>